Professional access points cost a lot of money and we need quite a lot of them here in order to cover this site. So I had to come up with a reliable yet cost effective solution and that involved these. Now this might surprise you but yeah it's t these are Talk Talk home gateways you know what you'd normally call routers. Now mm, this is the HG532 model which is the best one I found for this purpose. It's a 2x2, two two, so dual stream, send and receive model that supports 300 megabit per second uh, bit rates. Um, obviously it's only got a 100 meg LAN port and it's also obviously got an ADSL jack which we won't be using. It's very light, has got, also got WPS but we won't be using that because it's a security problem. And it has just nice indicator LEDs on the top. So all in all, it can be hidden quite well as well so that's all good as well um what i like about it you can disable the adsl very well very easily and it forwards the hcp request on very reliably there's none of the spit um you know sort of faff that you get with some of the other access points where they just keep redirecting requests to themselves even once you're specifically told them not to so i think up next um i shall load up the web portal for this so we can sort of see the menu and how to set it up optimally as an access point um, because that's what this video is all about using these as very low cost access points just talking about access points in general they're designed to be fairly simple devices to improve reliability and I've had absolutely no problems with the reliability of this at all but it's been running for about six months now and I haven't had to reboot it once I mean it's absolutely amazing um, not really what you'd expect of a talk talk device at all. Um, sadly some of the new models aren't anywhere near as good as this so if you're gonna buy one go for this one. I mean they're only a few quid on eBay normally because um, people like the new flashy black ones which are absolutely crap. So when you when you go on the root IP address you just get this where you insert in the username and password which is the password I've got on this is quite short and then it comes up with this broadband connection thing, but you can just skip that, go to advanced, and then it will pop up the device information here. Now, what you need to do is go into the basic here, and it's going to load up the WAN information. And, I mean, you can basically just leave that alone, and then go into the LAN option, disable the DHCP server there, so that's the option there. Disable that um, and set the DNS servers to what your DNS servers would be. Now you've got to kind of do this separately. So you've got to kind of uh, insert, I would do is insert the DNS servers first, then press submit and then disable the DHCP server and then submit again and then you are back then we can then you go over to the wireless LAN settings and what the WLAN option looks like see so you've got mode, country, channel, all sorts of things like that transmit power what I find interesting though is you can set up multiple access point names on here um, or rather you can actually set up multiple access points so that it will run sort of all at once and you can isolate them using IP isolation and you know you can you can set it up like you would a professional access point what I would say though is that it does not support um, WPA uh, enterprise on here so you can't use radius servers or anything like that which uh, corporate environments tend to like but in terms of a small business access point though which is kind of what this video is intended for this is just ace and i really yeah i'd really recommend them because i mean for three or four pounds you just simply can't beat it i mean a proper access point could set you back 80 or 90 pound and most of those ones perform much worse than this one does in terms of file transfers i mean this one over about up to 10 meters it hits the maximum of the, of the 100 meg interface so Thumbs up to that one. It's really great. I'd really recommend buying them. The main trouble is this is probably going to cause eBay prices to go up. But anyway, thanks for watching.